So this follows on from the, the stuff on blood. Um, so you might want to watch that if you haven't watched this first of all, and blood vessels. If not, you know, and you're happy with things, fine. So I'm going to start off with a, a kind of cartoony almost drawing of a heart. Okay, it looks a bit lopsided, but don't worry. Um, the heart comes into four chambers. This um, dividing line down the middle is called the septum. And this is the bit that in babies, um, so when, when the baby's still a fetus, when it's in the mother's womb, there would be a hole in the septum and blood would go straight through it um, because the baby isn't using its lungs. So mammals, humans, uh, have a double circulatory system where we send blood to the lungs and to the rest of the body. So the blood goes through the heart twice. In a, a, a fetus, it's not using its lungs. It's inside the um, in, inside the mother's uterus in the womb. So it's not using its lungs. So you'd have a hole in that septum. Usually that closes up when the baby's born. So we have these four chambers, as they're called. And I'm going to use colour on here. Again, blood isn't really blue but it helps to, to remind ourselves. So notice how I've done these little arrows pointing up. V for ventricle, pointing down, and A for atrium, plural is atria. Okay. Now, what you have to think is that, um, if I just do a, a quick demonstration with this uh, handy pog, Imagine I was um, doing a section of this uh, of the heart here. That side is the left-hand side as I'm looking at it, as I've got my um, my patient here. So the left-hand side is actually on that is this angle. You might sort of look at it and think, uh, yeah, well, that's on the right-hand side, isn't it? But no, it's it's imagining that you're looking down on the heart. So right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, left, ven left ventricle. Okay. Um, there are four blood vessels to be aware of. Now, it gets a little bit complicated if I try and draw this um, where all the blood vessels go, but we'll just sort of do a simple version of it for a moment. This actually goes into the left atrium. If it's coming into the heart, it must be a vein, and it's actually the pulmonary vein. Pulmonary means uh, to do with the lungs, in the same way cardiac means to do with the heart, uh, pulmonary means to do with the lungs. So blood comes into the left atrium, it actually then drips down into the left ventricle. And the left ventricle, the wall of it, is actually a lot thicker than it is on the right hand side. So there's more muscle on the left, and this is why that I've drawn that side of it slightly uh, bigger. The ventricle will contract, that's a really useful term when you talk about the heart. Talk about muscles contracting, not necessarily squeezing or pushing, it's going to contract and that will send blood out. Don't worry that it doesn't seem connected properly. You know, it would actually go into here. It's going to send blood out, and again, it's going away from the heart, so it must be an artery. That's called the aorta. And that would carry blood off um, around the rest of the body, to the head and all the organs, through the capillaries. Um, and it would come back in a blood vessel called the vena cava, which is the main... Um, then the body. That would come into this side, the right atrium. It would drip through into the right ventricle, and again, it's a bit tricky to draw it without confusing things. This is a blood vessel going away from the heart, so it must be an artery, and it's actually called the pulmonary artery. Okay, now notice the colour here. Blue is used to indicate that it's deoxygenated blood. It's not really blue, it's just used to see it. But it's deoxygenated, it's been around the body, it's dropped all its oxygen off, that would go to the lungs, come back into this side, round the body, lungs, body, and round and round. So that's our double circulatory system. The blood goes through the heart twice. Okay. Um, we also have, if I try and draw uh, another version of it, I'll do it again. I'll try and be a bit more, a little bit more realistic with things, if I can. Um, so there's our blood vessels going off the aorta going off and the pulmonary artery okay um, now what's going to happen is as it drips into here's the atria this part here is a valve so just like in veins the heart has valves and it's to do the same thing it's to prevent um, 
the blood going backwards in a way that you, the direction you want to go. So you might call it backflow or to ensure the blood goes in the, the correct direction. So that bit there, the valve will shut. Now when you've done um, the dissection of the heart, if you've done that, this is one of the obvious things you can see. It looks on the inside, it's where you see those stringy bits, okay, on, on the inside of the heart. What's happening is, if you imagine the valves that direction, as the ventricle contracts, it squeezes the blood and it pushes the valve. Now what those stringy bits do, is they prevent the valve from kind of getting pushed all the way through. So the stringy bits keep it from going all the way. Okay, so it's doing that. There's a second valve in here. Okay, called the aorta. So you've got a valve there and a valve uh, between the atria and the ventricle. And you've got a valve in the main artery going away. Now it's exactly the same on uh, the other side. So you'd have a valve there and you'd have a valve here. So it makes sure that the blood goes through in the right directions. Okay. And those two valves, <coughs> excuse me, open and close together. And those two valves open and close together. And that's when you hear a heartbeat, it's actually the sound of these valves. So the kind of classic of the heart, it's the valves closing. Okay, that's what you're hearing. It's got a proper name if you want it. It's called Lub Dub. There you go. That's the, the proper, proper name for the, the sound it's making. Um, now, apart from those big blood vessels, the ones I'll, I should have used that blue colour again on there, shouldn't I really? There we go. That's it with the, the blood vessels on. Um, problems with the heart. I'll tell you what, I won't use blue. Let's use green. Um, so if you're looking at a heart on the outside, it will have, I'm not talking about the big blood vessels anymore, but the heart muscle itself has to be supplied by blood. And the blood supply comes from something called a coronary artery. If these things get blocked, um, so let's imagine there's a blockage here, so it stops any blood getting down, a small area of that heart isn't getting any blood and it can well, it can get weak, you know, it's like um, stopping the blood going uh, to any part of your body. You will, you know, if you can tell that, at the end of my finger is starting to go a, a purpley colour because I'm, I'm limiting the blood supply there. Okay, it's, it's got a different colour to my other fingers. Right. So a blockage in the artery prevents blood getting through. Um, and if, it, if no oxygen gets through for a while, the, the muscle can die or be damaged. And that's what we know as a heart attack. If the blood vessel was blocked higher up here, then it would block blood getting through all of those bits. So you'd have a, a bigger heart attack, if you like, a bigger problem. Okay. What can you do about these things? Well, um, you can take drugs called statins, which can, um, it, it lowers um, actually your blood cholesterol. Cholesterol is a chemical, you have to make it in your liver, um, but it is associated with um, heart disease, too much cholesterol, in your diet uh, is associated with heart disease. So statins will reduce and a lot of people when they get older will have uh, statins. Even something like aspirin, a fairly common drug, is taken by a lot of people which makes the blood um, a little bit thinner uh, and less likely to clot. But you can also have options such as um, surgery. So there's something called a stent. And this is if your blood vessel has, has got narrower, oh, let's use a red because it's an artery. In fact, what happens here, we should just say, that, let's imagine that's the, the direction of the, the blood flowing in the coronary artery. What happens is, the reason it gets blocked, if you get damaged to the wall of the artery, let's say it's there, we get a bit of damage, and it, it kind of bulges, like this, bulges out. A bit like when you get um, a bulge on a, on a ball, if you've seen on like a basketball where you get those little sort of bulging eggs. Um, and that will just keep getting bigger and bigger. So it reduces the, the lumen, the diameter of the, the blood vessel. And you can get bits of stuff sort of stuck on the inside of it and things as well. And then other bits get stuck. Um, and that's progressively making it more and more difficult to get um, blood through. If something gets stuck in there like a bit of a blood clot, you know, a big one, you get a sudden cut off of blood, um, and that would be you know the really sort of dangerous um, sudden heart attacks. What a stent does, it's a kind of I suppose a little wire tube. You can think of it like a little wire mesh tube, 
uh, and it gets inserted into the artery. Imagine there's, there's our artery. Um, and it, it just keeps it up. The way they put it in there, they, they use a, it's like a balloon that's put down the artery and inflated. Um, you know, and these things might be only a couple of millimeters across. We're not talking about a huge balloon here, but you inflate the little balloon, and the stent goes in there, and it, it keeps it uh, the the artery open for you. And that's um, another way you can keep it open. Um, a couple of other problems, so you can have leaky uh, valves in your heart. So if the valves don't quite close properly, blood will end up going backwards and make it become less efficient. Um, you can have surgery for that, so you can have artificial valves or even a xenotransplant, which is using um, a valve from another animal. And you might think, what about rejection? Well, the valves themselves are, are actually quite simple. They're just, um, you know, you can get mechanical ones now. Um, so they don't necessarily even need to have any cells on them. They can just be made of <coughs> material that, that your body isn't going to reject. Um, a pacemaker is a common, fairly common thing to have put in. Uh, actually, your heart itself, there's a region up on here that sort of tells your heart how many times to beat. And it's called the pacemaker region in your heart. But sometimes it doesn't work very well, so you can have an artificial one put in and it tells your heart to keep beating regularly. So that's what a pacemaker does. And they're also looking at um, artificial hearts. So actually building mechanical hearts that will do the job. They're not a permanent solution, but um, given the amount of people, you know, thousands of people really could do with heart transplants, and you maybe only get about 100 done a year because there's, you know, as with any surgery, there's a bit of danger to it. Um, if we can get artificial hearts, it removes the need for donors and it will remove the problem of rejection, which is when the body, the body's immune system attacks um, a new heart because it recognises that it doesn't belong to, um, it wouldn't belong to the person who's having you know, had the heart put in them and your own body attacks it and that's called rejection. And that can be very dangerous for you. So artificial hearts, yeah, they, they exist, um, but they're not perfect yet, but they're getting better, I suppose, all the time.